Taming the Demon by Amel Obscura. Chapter 6 to number 8, Catching Expert. The old man took his sweet time getting out here to redo the clubhouse. The victory against Koigahama was two weeks ago. He didn't seem at all surprised when Iruma called him to do the job. He didn't bother asking who would pay for it until it had already begun. He didn't even blink when he was told the principal was covering the cost. Hadn't so much as said hello to each other in months and Musashi still known him too well. But if there was one thing that the blonde was a little bit grateful for, it was that the manager didn't make a big deal out of the old man being there. She barely even greeted him. This pleased the quarterback for two reasons. The first being that he knew that the old man didn't like reminders of the old days, and the second being that if the brat found out who Musashi was, he might make a fuss and accidentally reopen old wounds. But Namazaki was discreet about it all, so nothing happened. The kids seemed to be in some pain, but that would wear off soon enough. Hiroma gave the kid the pictures to organize and told him to separate the Sakuraba ones from the useful ones by the end of the day. School was over! Where was he? Slower than the fat ass on the 40, this kid. It was almost funny how he thought he could be team manager when it took him all day to do something stupid like sort pictures. Well, the blonde and the fat ass were already on their way to the brat's classroom to use the TV. Might as well hurry him up. What was he crying about? Granted, he stopped as soon as Iruma barged through the door, but the signs were still there. Whatever it was, though, the kid seemed determined to hide it, asking about the TV and why only this classroom had one. This was our classroom last year. End of set. Remembering what had occurred to him just after the game yesterday, the blonde made a comment about preparing for the Christmas Bowl. You guessed it. The brat had no idea that another tournament was coming up. The kid appeared to remember and realize something, probably something that Shin said, and shortly finished with the photos and left. But as the blonde glanced out the window, he noticed the shrimp out in the rain running drills. He fell repeatedly, was probably soaked to the bone and covered in mud, but he kept getting back up, again and again and again. Hiruma changed his mind. It wasn't just his running. The kid in general was a thing of beauty. After the blonde and the fat ass finished their work and Hiruma was about to head out, the quarterback took out a small box from where he'd hidden it on his person. That little place he keeps all his guns that everybody thinks is a fourth dimensional pocket. After checking to see that the lineman wouldn't be coming back for any reason, the blonde hastily wrote a note on a scrap of paper, taped it to the box, and shoved it in the kid's desk. The gloves you've been using are secondhand and crappy quality, so I got you these. Don't waste them! Congrats on meeting Shin. The kid seemed impressed with the new clubhouse. Impressed, freaked out, same thing. And Hiruma was pleased that the kid had borrowed a ball to practice with. He was taking his position as running back seriously. Soon, the four devil bats were off recruiting. The blonde figured all the other useless clubs had enough members to carry on whatever they did, so he just tore down any other posters as he saw fit. They had a Christmas bowl to win. As he methodically tore down and pinned up posters, the blonde thought back on the shorty with potential for multiple personality disorder. He had seemed to have an idea when the necessity of a receiver was mentioned, but shrunk back into it himself when said receiver's height was brought up. Maybe the kid was debating on inviting a new recruit? Hiruma would have to ask him later about who he had in mind and just how short they were. Depending on that versus catching ability, it may not matter if they're below a certain height. He wondered if the kid found his new gloves yet. Did he like them? He better appreciate them. Does he know how rare it is for someone to get a present from Hiruma Yorichi? Pretty rare! The blonde needed to think about something else now. Something like how easy it was to incite demon at the Ojo game. Hiruma figured being told it was being looked down on was a tad risky at the time. He may have gone berserk on the crowd instead of in the game. But it didn't. It knew that to prove it wasn't worthless to these people, it had to play by their rules. They wanted a show. It gave them a show. 
Demon also seemed to recognize Shin, whether as a rival or a form of measuring stick or just another plain source of aggravation. Hiruma wasn't yet sure that he would find out. Right now, though, he was out of posters. Posters up, work was done. Now they were just waiting for the game on TV to start. The kid was so distracted that he didn't react to anything until the blonde started shooting at him. And where did the manager get a bulletproof notebook? The look on his face when he saw what the quarterback had done for Ice Shield's image was hilarious. Hiruma would be laughing about that face for years. The kid was completely out of it the next day, too. But after asking if Amafuto was a specialized sport and if extra height on a receiver was mandatory, he appeared to come to a decision of some sort. Too bad, because your rumor had planned to make him run like a bat out of hell today. Was it solely because the kid had goofed up with the posters? No. The quarterback wanted the kid to build up stamina at his max speed because if he kept fainting every time he did 4.2 for the 40, he was going to get killed. That finished, it was time to hunt for receivers. He next came upon Senna by the shoe lockers, suspiciously dogless, talking to some monkey with no seat to his pants. Remembering the brat's earlier question about receivers and heights, the blonde pitched a ball at the monkey. Who got it? With one hand. Hello, receiver.